Okay, being at least 7 o'clock um, and now having a quorum, I will call the Conservation Commission meeting to order. 7 o'clock, we have a Notice of Intent Public Hearing, file number 170-247, which was continued. Uh, Lake Warner LLC seeks to repair dam at Lake Warner at 221 and 223 River Drive and two Hibbard Lanes. Hi, Simon Hill, who's going to take this over? Um, the project here. I uh, first just wanted to ask if the commission would like me to walk back through some of the project details. Okay. Please do. So, first figure that we've got here essentially shows the, the project area in relation to where it's located in the town here. So the red outline essentially shows the limits of the project work. We've got Route 47 River Drive here, Mount Warner Road here. Um, also in yellow, we're showing the limits of the proposed temporary staging area. Do you want to move a little bit so, yes, yeah, so we can see, but then the audience can see. Sure. Yeah. That's good. Good. So again, in red here is the project area. Uh, Lake Warner Dam is shown here. You can actually see water spilling up the spillway there. The yellow outline box here is the proposed temporary staging area that would be used for storage of uh, equipment and materials during the project. And then again, the purple box here would be the uh, proposed temporary dewatering location for the dewatering of the, uh, the copper dam areas during the work. Looking to the next figure, just basically shows uh, the project in relation to natural heritage map priority and estimated habitats. As you can see, the entire project area is within both of those areas here. So with that, um, I can present to you, unless you already have copies of the, uh, the determination that was issued by Natural Heritage, saying that there would not be a take of rare species. Um, let's see, is that the one I handed out? No, that's a different one. I, so. uh, I guess you can hand them out to people. But one copy here, not much for everybody, unfortunately, but yep, that's okay. essentially that it would not result in a take. Um, one of the other uh, outstanding items was payment of an additional fee amount as determined by the commission here. So I brought the, uh, the receipts for the certified mailings. I believe Janet has received the, or Janice has received the, the CONCOM share and uh, also the DEP has been mailed their share as well. I thought the last I heard, they, when they looked at the lockbox, it hadn't come in, but that's not a surprise with the mail just taking a little longer to get the Yeah, it, it takes a while to get the green card back yeah. typically as well. So getting into the project, next figure here shows the existing conditions of the project site. So similar orientation to the figure that you just saw. We've got 47 uh, River Drive here, Mount Warner Road here. The spillway of the dam is located here, and what's shown in blue is essentially uh, the limit of bank and uh, medial high water of uh, the Mill River. Um, so basically, Got the dam spillway here, the sector residence here, which is the former mill uh, building, and also the Bosford residence here, which is a, it's a residence just on the edge of the river here with a garage. Uh, this hatched area, again, is just an area of uh, stone uh, scour protection, riprap essentially, and those are generally the uh, most pertinent features associated with that figure. Uh, getting into the next figure here, we're showing the uh, the limits of the work here, which is basically uh, what's shown in yellow. So uh, this section here would generally be the, the upland work area where uh, equipment would be accessing the site, uh, cranes or whatever other equipment was used would be staged up in this area. Also an, an area of tree clearing that would need to occur here to access the dam. Uh, the, the area down here in the river essentially shows the two uh, phased coffer dams that would be used to perform the work. So again, we've got two phases of the coffer dam. One phase being this here, which would be phase one, and then phase two wrapping around this way and essentially uh, allowing work on the majority of the dam there. The other portion of the work area that's shown here is up in the Wasserts backyard, which is essentially uh, included for removal of this leaning pine tree here. It's a large pine tree that's leaning over the river. Uh, and again, this, this area is included essentially because uh, it's likely that equipment will need to get down here to cut the tree and remove the logs and debris. And again, this tree is being removed because it's essentially a hazard tree to the dam. It's dropping debris into the river and making maintenance yes. an issue. I'm talking to the That's <laughs> okay. All right. This next sheet from the plan set essentially shows what the work entails. And again, uh, 
the work is being undertaken as basically public safety uh, repairs and also because uh, community has uh, voiced support of maintaining the dam to maintain the, the Lake Warner as, as it currently exists. So essentially what the repairs entail are uh, repairs to the existing concrete, replacement of the sluice gate and low level outgate gate over there. Uh, but generally repairs to the concrete is, is the main uh, component of the project repairs uh, and also uh, refreshment of some of that stone, stone scour protection that was mentioned earlier which is not shown in this figure but it's essentially right up here. So basically what you're seeing in gray are the areas where concrete would be repaired during the work. Um, that's the most important piece of that. So I'll go back to the figure that shows the limit of work. So, as I mentioned, uh, some tree clearing is going to be required to access the work area. We uh, have taken a look out there and it's about a dozen trees that need to come down. Mature trees, that is, there are some other saplings and some uh, shrubs that need to be removed as well. And also, um, with the Office of Dam Safety Regulations, uh, management of woody material in uh, 25 feet of the dam is required, so that complies with also the, the dam regulations there. So essentially how the work would proceed is uh, the first phase of work would be cutting trees within this hatched area here and also this large pine tree here. That would happen um, in uh, early springtime likely. And then the work would actually uh, mobilize, the, the equipment would mobilize the site probably in sometime in June. The, uh, the work period that's proposed is the low flow season per the core regulations, section 404 of the Clean Water Act, which, which would be uh, July 1st through September 30th. Uh, so basically once that uh, uh, time approaches here, the next phase of work would be establishing the sedimentation erosion controls which would enclose the upland work area and then clearing and grubbing of any of the stumps and basically preparing the access down to the site here. Uh, once that area is cleared and the access is, is uh, obtained, uh, one of the first things that needs to happen would be to establish the coffer dam for phase one of the work which again was this, this kind of zigzag line here. So the coffer dam would go in from the shoreline and extend to a portion of the dam. That area would be dewatered using pumps, which the, if you recall that the figure that I showed earlier with the, uh, the purple box, which is essentially on the other side of the Mountain Water Road bridge uh, in the uh, Green, Green Bombs property over there. <laughs> Um, the water would be pumped from this area here and discharged into a, a filter bag located in the upland lawn area and, a lot, and that would also be prepared, uh, protected with uh, erosion or sediment barrier. Basically that water would be allowed to discharge through the lawn into that sediment barrier and then be allowed to flow back into the, into the uh, river there. Um, once the, the work area is dewatered here, um, work would commence as far as removing some of the deteriorated concrete around the dam and the existing training walls here. Also replacement of that stone scour, scour protection along this area in the purple section there. Um, once that work is completed and the, uh, the concrete has been repaired and also again the, the sluice gate here, low level outlet gate has been replaced, the engineer would come in and uh, inspect that work to make sure it had been done uh, according to the specifications. And then the installation of the phase two coffer dam would begin. And the way that would work is basically extending the dam or the coffer, temporary coffer dam along this zigzag line as shown here. And as we discussed at the last uh, Conservation Commission meeting, the plan would be to lower this section of the phase one coffer dam to the elevation of the spillway here. And that would serve to maintain the water level of the lake so we didn't have a lowering, a drawdown of the lake. And it would also serve so that no one had to come in and manually adjust the low level outlet gate. Basically, this thing would be in place here, maintaining that water level. Um, so once that was established, um, again, this, this coffer dam would extend all the way over to the uh, river left uh, training wall here. And a component of that is, if you recall, and actually I do have uh, photographs that I can pass out again if we don't have those. Basically, this line here, uh, if you recall, there was a what we refer to as a rubble wall. It's sort of a composite masonry with a, with a grant, uh, concrete slab on top of it. So a portion of that wall would need to be removed in order for the, the coffer dam to be extended. That wall is shown in photo. Again, they're shown as photo one and two. That's a mistake. It should be nine and 10. 
you can see the, uh, the state of that wall there, it's already quite broken up. And essentially, the section where we're showing the coffer dam extending through the wall would either be plucked out with machinery or removed by hand so that coffer dam could extend all the way to the training wall there and this area could be dewatered. Um, once that's done, similar to phase one, we would be dewatering through the dewatering system uh, a pump to a hose that would extend under the bridge here, discharging in the Green Bombs property, the same as, as phase one there. So with the removal of the, uh, the rubble wall there, there was some question about how that would be done and how the pieces would be retrieved. <coughs> and essentially, if you look at this shown in, I think, what should be again photo 10, you can see that there is some uh, an accumulation of sediment that is basically abutting the wall there and, and kind of makes a, a slope also visible in the actual photo one here where you can see that there is a tree growing out of that sediment there. So essentially it's not too deep on either side of the wall. So removing that section of the wall, if uh, portions of it, you know, basically some of the some of the cobbles that were used to, to make to manufacture that wall or some of the concrete slab. Uh, were, were lost uh, on, along either side, it would basically either be plucked out by hand at the time of removal or once the area was dewatered, it would be able to be retrieved at that time. Um, so that's essentially the, the gist of how the work is going to be um, conducted. Um, and Morris, do you have anything to add as far as the process of the construction? Well, you may want to mention how we intend to work on what we call the deflector wall downstream of the dam. Right. So another component is this, this what we're calling the deflector wall. It's this relic piece of concrete shown in photo. Uh, it's shown in photograph two with a big red arrow pointing to it. Also visible in photograph four. It's a piece of the dam that's no longer functional um, and essentially that's just going to be broken off, likely using large machinery and excavator or something of the like there. And what we've calculated is that the surface area of that is about 44 square feet, so removal of that will actually be an addition of 44 square feet of land underwater. Um, that's, that's essentially the gist of how the work will go and then essentially once again the phase two work has been inspected and that, that has been approved by the engineer that everything has gone according to the specifications, uh, these areas would be allowed to refill uh, with, with water and then the, the coffer dam would basically be removed, backed out. The upland area that was used for access and again there is going to be uh, some uh, like basically a stone access pad that will be uh, installed there during construction to limit erosion and make sure that everything's stable for the machinery that need to get in there. That will all be removed and backed out. Uh, the original grades will be restored to existing conditions and then again we're not proposing any replanting of woody material in here because that doesn't comply with office dam safety regulations so just replanting with some native uh, herbaceous uh, material would be the plan for that area and that's essentially the, the plan. Um, some of the Unless there are any questions right after that here. That area where you, the <coughs> hatched area, that's extremely steep. This area here? Yes. Yes. Really steep. You're going to have to put an awful lot of fill in there if you're going to drive equipment down there. Well, it would likely be less fill and more cut, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yes. It, oh, okay. It, 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 is, uh, it is reasonably steep. Actually, if you look at photograph four, it's, it's nothing that an excavator couldn't handle on its own right now, but it's more uh, the issue would be just wanting to stabilize that area so that we're not going to have erosion down the, into, the, into the work zone there. Um, so it's, it's really, that's, that's the main reason there, and just to have a level work area so that the machine is you know, stable. Um, but again, it would be more cutting back that material and then replacing it once it's, once it's stabilized. When the work is being um, restored, when the work area, upland work area is being restored, uh, we're proposing to use um, uh, erosion control netting, a biodegradable material to stabilize the area, and then seeding with a, a native seed mix, essentially. Other questions before I jump into the next part? Yeah. Okay. So uh, some of the, some of the, uh, Outstanding items that were left open from the last hearing we've already covered as far as the response from Natural Heritage, the payment of the additional fee. Um, two other items were uh, 
the commission expressed some concerns about how the sediment behind the dam would be managed. And again, to refresh your memory, that would be, we're anticipating it would be about 30 cubic yards that would need to be removed from behind the dam here. Mm -hmm. um, and we did some thinking, and uh, one, of the, one of the concerns that the commission expressed was liability that would be placed onto the proponent Kestrel Land Trust or French Lake Warner with management of that cement. So uh, we did some thinking, and, and what we, we came up with was our thought is the best uh, alternative that we could offer would be to basically propose some language for a condition in the order of conditions that would address that. So I've gone ahead and, and addressed, uh, drafted up some, some draft language, and it essentially said, well, I'll read it verbatim. The contractor shall comply with applicable state, local, and federal laws and regulations related to the testing, handling, and disposal of dredge material. These regulations include, but are not limited to, Section 401 of the Federal Clean Water Act, and then it gives the reference, Six, uh, the Massachusetts 401 Water Quality Certification Regulations reference, and the Massachusetts Contingency Plan. So those are the state and federal regulations that deal with dredging, dredged material, mm -hmm. and uh, protection of human health with uh, that type of material. So uh, I submit that to you now for consideration right. as a condition. Mm -hmm. And we, we feel that that is the best way to address this situation because mm -hmm. it would take the liability and place it directly on the contractor as is standard in most of these types of operations. We're below the, the uh, state thresholds anyway that would be, you know, mandate this type of work. Uh, and it, it does, again, take the risk, the liability off of the component here and put it onto, onto the contractor. Um, the other item that was outstanding from last time was the proposed seed mix for the restoration and the one that I would propose or, or the project team here would propose would be the New England wetland plants erosion control and restoration mix for dry sites. I brought the uh, specification sheet from the New England wetland plants in Amherst there. It's all native material and it's quick spreading material that's uh, suitable for steep slopes and will basically lock up the site and, and also again provide native material. And where, where on the restoration site, um, that's a planting mix, right? Mm -hmm. um, would you actually be putting in any type of a shrub, or? No. Again, because the Office of Dam Safety um, wants dam owners to steer away from, or actually manage woody mm -hmm. uh, plant material away, 25 feet away from the dam, that essentially covers all of the area that's going to be disturbed here. So we're not proposing to replace any woody material there. And that's, that's because the roots of those plants can actually get down into the, the structure and, and cause problems. The other thing is we'd like to maintain this area as an herbaceous uh, cover material. And one of the things that we uh, outlined in the NOI would be wanting to ma maintain that annually. Uh, Natural Heritage indicated that for the, the species that's listed here, which is uh, wood turtle, they'd like to see that mowing of the herbaceous material happen in the November or later time frame. So that's, that's essentially what we're, what we're proposing there. It would meet Office of Dam Safety regulations. It would also, you know, again, provide native material, but it would also provide uh, a, a suitable access means to the dam if, if there needs to be future maintenance, which is likely. Whose property is that? Um, this area here is uh, Blossard's property. Boysford. 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 Yeah. And so do we need to have any permanent restriction on that in terms of what's planted and mowing or I mean I don't want to step on too many toes and stuff but I'm just wondering long term um, if there's something that should just be said. So, so, so again because uh, there are uh, I believe four properties that are involved in, in the project here so we've got Boysford, Boysford, Boysford. 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 Sector, Green Bomb, and Roads. Roads being the, the staging area there. Each one of those uh, landowners has signed a memor memorandum of agreement uh, that's included in the notice of intent, and that's included as the signature for the WPA Form 3. Um, so as far as access, that's established in, in the plans there. As far as continued maintenance uh, of, of the dam, um, that's... Um, the, the deed contains an easement over the boys' Rip property. So this That's the answer. So Do they have any preferences of how they want it restored or, um, you know, I mean, a lawn or, I mean, outside I mean, of the ODS and 
have have they been spoken to about this proposed restoration plan? As far as the specifics of the seed mix that's to be used, uh, I don't believe they have. As far as whether uh, woody material will be replaced, I would defer to Morris and Kristen on that one. Yeah, they're very aware of what's proposed. I met with Mr. Weisberg last Wednesday. So they're, so they're aware of what's being proposed as far as planting. Are they, they're also aware of um, the maintenance of it, that it would be cut once a year? They're aware of that, that it's not going to be an area maintained as a, as a lawn? I, I would think that beca because the, the deed does include the easement there, that would be for maintenance. So maintenance of access, I don't mean to put words in the project proponent's mouth here. but I think it would be worth confirming with them the, the mowing regime in the, in the late uh, season. But mm -hmm. Because I don't, I don't foresee an issue with it being, you know, one of the reasons this is pre pre proposed is because of the uh, habitat and the mowing would be, you said, November. Mm -hmm. um, if they want to mow that on a regular basis, that would be in conflict with the um, species that are in. So right now, that area is. Well, it's steep enough that it's not used yeah. as a lawn. Right. So, right. but once it's it's going to be cleared and it's right. going to be open, so, the, yeah, so the that's a conversation. The, the two yeah. thoughts that I would add that may help the commission uh, to understand that situation there is, uh, first, if you if you look at photographs three and four, you can see that the, the area is not currently maintained. Again, it is that steep slope, mm -hmm. so it's not going to be used for bocce ball or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But the other is that I believe this is this is a rental property here. Correct. Um, so it, it's not likely to be a prime concern of the Bosforts to, to maintain that area more regularly. And since they're not maintaining it now, I don't anticipate that, that it would be an issue. Okay. But we would probably put, want to put that in an order of conditions. Indeed. So I don't want to put that in an order of conditions and have them say, we don't want that. Do you under, right? You said you wanted to have a, you'd have a conversation with them. About that, or well, I think we, I think we should have a conversation about it. I, I don't necessarily think it should hold up the permitting process till next March, though. But if we put it in as a condition, and it's something they object to, then are you suggesting as a, as a perpetual condition? As a condition on the order, right, and for maintenance, future maintenance. Well, again. The, there is a, the, the maintenance easement in the deed, so I think I would I would assume that the property owner would understand that. that well, that we, I don't want to assume anything. Uh, under, about, understood. Um, the the option would be then if you were to include that in in the order of conditions that that is to be maintained once a year at a specific time, which completely makes sense in accordance with natural heritage. If they did have any issue with that after the fact, they could appeal. One that. thing I can assure you is I know them better than anybody yeah. dealing with them, and I'm not going to assume nothing. Okay. I know I'm real good. <laughs> okay, so I don't think you should. Any, of you. go and see them and make sure it's right. right. And I'm and not going to sidestep any landowners over what, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. If if we do continue this to the next one, it would just be to open and close and issue an order. We'd probably have one drafted right there so that it's easy enough to get issued um, right away. Because I know. Um, at the last meeting you had talked about you needed to be able to do cutting of trees um, no. by April 15th be, no, in order right. to for the bats. Uh, bats. Mm -hmm. So I know, I mean, do you have, is there an existing RFP that's going out for contractors right now and or documents that are being prepared to go out? Or are you just soliciting bids? Should the trees be cut before the 15th of April, uh, we were going to be negotiating with a local arborist. And so no okay, So that wouldn't be included in the bids? Correct. To do the, the work on the dam? Right. Okay. So that would be separate? Right. Okay. But we do still need that permission in order right. to do that work. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's where we said that if... It would be something that we would, if in order, 
to make sure that everyone's on the same page, um, continuing it to next month would just be open, close, as long as there's no other issues mm -hmm. from the commission and have it issued, uh, we should be able to have a, a draft, two draft conditions and issue it that night as long as there's no issues with um, the owners. Because that property is part of this, the access and continued maintenance. Yes, there's an easement there, but the easement doesn't say how it's to be maintained. Um, and we would want to make sure that the property owners um, are on board with that. Okay. And the other conditions that I've we're looking at is that we would, once you have a contractor, that they would have to submit um, information to the commission for our to review on the coffer dams because it wasn't specific as to what type of the coffer dam they would be installing. Because um, you said there's a couple different um, versions or options that are out there. At least. At least. <laughs> and that we would want, and technology changes, you know, every day. So um, we would want that. Uh, you've got clearance from Natural Heritage. Uh, you're going to need a waiver from the 35-foot no work zone. Mm -hmm. um, cutting of trees would be before um, April 15th. Low flow work would be between July 1 and September 30th. We'd also be looking for, and you said this would be with the contractor, contingency um, plans if it's a really wet summer. Um, how would you deal with dewatering if we had, you know, we've had summers where it's been raining quite a bit, so they would have to have some contingency plan for that to be able to get the work done. Um, that would likely be part of the water management plan? Right. Right, right. Yeah. Um, it would be built into the coffer dam plan. Right. Did, did you have a sense of uh, minimum flow? We had a uh, question or comment from the Friends of Lake Warner in terms of uh, guaranteeing uh, minimum flow. Now, it seems to me what you said before is that the flow would not be any different because of the way you're configuring the like, coffer dams. Is that true? So that shouldn't be an issue to have? It shouldn't be an issue. I mean, going to, as the chair indicates, I mean, as we know, sometimes we could have you know, high flow, I mean, maintaining the minimum flow or as wildlife service would recommend what they call the conservation flow. Uh -huh. um, that's going to be absolutely no problem. Um, you know, dealing with the numbers for a minute, uh, once the outlet gate is restored, uh -huh. mm -hmm. it is capable of flowing 80 cubic feet per second. Mm -hmm. And you have a 30 square mile watershed and the rule of thumb that they have for the summer low flow season is one half a cubic foot per second per square mile. So you'd be flowing 15 cubic feet per second. So that flows through the gate quite easily. We have more than enough capacity. So that's why when we talk about the coffer dam plan and we move to phase two, what we'll do is essentially trim the top of that steel to an elevation so that will easily regulate and mm -hmm. otherwise maintain Lake Warner as people have usually seen it. Actually, as it is now when the gate leaks, the lake tends to fall. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Are you considering at all what one of the things that Natural Heritage asked about um, fish passage? Fish or eel passage? It's not part of this project. I mean, that's future conversation with Friends yeah. of Lake Warner. Yeah. It seems like this, without doing some type of a lift, it seems like it would be a tough. Um, it's easier for eels than it is for fish. But. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want <like> eels? <laughs> it's snakes that swim in water. <laughs> yeah. Depends okay, upon so your culture. They could be good eating. 
Uh, you try it, I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the other thing was, um, with my other Conservation Commission, we always require stamped plans. Mm -hmm. So I was um, wondering, because I didn't see that there were any engineer stamps in any of these. Um, it's not required under the Wellness Protection Act, and it wasn't noted in the Hadley Wellness Protection Bylaw. Yeah. So, so typically, it's it would be something that would be included in the bylaw that would give us the heads up that it's required. Well, yeah. Meanwhile, if it sounds like the hearing is going to be continued, I mean, we can mm -hmm. provide stamp plans at the next hearing. Okay. Yeah. Just to cover ourselves. Yeah. Okay. We'll cover you too. Okay. So. I've outlined a couple of things that we would be requiring as conditions. Does okay. anyone else have other things? Or do you have any questions about things that I went over? Again, just to, just to recap, the things that you're looking for is consent from the property owner regarding the mm -hmm. management of vegetation there, the water management plan in association with the copper dam. Yeah. And design, of, well, once that would be once you have a contractor, the design and installation right. of the coffer dam, just, I mean, the concept and what's been outlined there is fine. It's just a matter of what exactly is it going to be constructed of, and that's going to depend on um, the contractor that gets hired. Um, and again, that will be one of the conditions right. within the order. Okay. Right. So that's, that's what I was talking about. And then the water management plan to keep the water going, and then contingency for um, if it's a really wet, what's, what are their options? What are they going to do if it's a really wet summer? Mm -hmm. so. We spoke about core samples closer to the dam, too. Right. How about that? Um, that would be covered by this uh, condition about um, when the contractor, and this would be on the contractor, where they would comply with state and local laws for excavation and disposal of materials in accordance with, um, let's see, Clean Water Act, um, water quality certification, and mass contingency plan, which is for if there's any hazmat or any heavy metals or anything like that that might show up in it. Mm. Now, how would this be done? What do you mean? Are we just going to clam it out and put it on the ground and take? Samples out of what comes out. Are we going to take a course? Yeah, if samples were taken, it would likely be done once the site was dewatered. I think would mm -hmm. make the most sense and take like a core sample. Just go down. Th that's typically what the regulations mm -hmm. specify. Yeah. Right. I would go with that more than just right. putting some surplus on the ground and going over there with a jar and taking something out of it. No, no, no. Right. Definitely. Well, I mean, it it depends. That's been done. You can do core samples or. Composite. You can do a composite right. sample. The composite sample, I mean, once you have everything excavated, you take a random right. samples of everything. Right. And, and, and again, as far as the, the way the sediment would be man, managed when it's actually dredged and removed, would, would like, likely be with a crane using a clamshell bucket and would be depositing that directly in a dump, in a dump truck and, and taking that off-site. So they're, they're, we're not proposing anywhere on-site where there would be a sediment lay-down area where we need to contain you know, wet sediment. Mm -hmm. Because they would, if they're going to be taking it right off site, you would need to have those samples before in order to have clearance to dispose of it. A disposal facility, if you need to take it to a disposal facility, would, would require right. those. Right. Yeah. So you'd want to know that beforehand and not just take it somewhere. Yeah, the facility would, would require that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? I was just trying to remember. Um, I. I can't say I do, but I think there was. Is there some kind of a uh, operation and maintenance plan or anything like that that you've done, or that's going to need to be done on a regular basis now that you're getting it in better shape? I didn't know if there was. If, I can't remember if there was something included in the notice on that or not. That would be part of the phase two. Once the phase two or the repair work. Isn't that part of the dam safety program? Well, uh, okay, just clarification. Operation this. and maintenance what of the dam. What are you thinking about? If there are any sort of normal inspections that should be done yearly mm -hmm. or whatever, like in the herbaceous area, you check for cracks or, you know, uh, trim back uh, saplings or seedlings or something, or I don't know if, if, if there's just something that 
um, should be in, included that uh, you normally after the dam is repaired. Yes. I, yeah. I, I, I think I'm not a dam safety expert, but yeah. I think probably most of those things that you're thinking about are would have be outlined in the dam safety regulations. Right. Yeah, yeah, they're in the dam safety regulations. I mean, we haven't prepared an operations and maintenance. Right. 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 But dam safety will require you once the repairs are made to have an operation and maintenance plan for this, so that uh, you know exercising the gate. Um, they'll require that certain number of times a year, once a year maybe. Um, inspection of it, I believe inspections of the dams. If this is small enough, it's like every uh, three years, I think two or three years. In the case of this dam, what is this? let's see, significant hazard if it remains in that class, um, it's a five year cycle. Okay. So, but each year you're going to have to do something with the you can't wait five years to try and operate the outlet. Correct. So that would have to be draft put together. And the dam safety is going to require that, and I think the commission would like a copy of that once you've put it together, just okay. so we have something on record. Okay. Anything else? No, no. Okay. So... I guess we're going to need a motion to continue to March 8th, I think, because we have an extra day in February. Yeah, March 8th. I'll make it. Okay. All second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No abstentions. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you.